just a few thoughts on shifting because uh, these are a few things I really, really wish I knew long, long time ago when I was young and doing a lot of performing and things. Um, so basically, um, I do want to talk about shifting in future videos, but for today, to keep it kind of short, uh, I want you to use as many cues and as many senses as possible. Uh, we have five senses. <laughs> we can't taste how we shift, we can't smell how we shift, but we can use the other three senses. So for example, if I have, I want to get up to like a, to this high A, right? And I keep missing, you know, there's like a famous one in the Zigoner Weisen by Sarasati. So um, there are a lot of um, tricky pieces where there's a big jump, right? So if I were to do that, what I would do is check out What's my hand doing, all right? So I can do it by my visual cues, right? So I can see about how far away is my finger from the end of the fingerboard? How far away does it look from the, where the shoulders of the violin are, right? I can look at um, what does my hand look like, right? How much of my arm do I see? Uh, so visually you can you can do that. I can also see my thumb back there about where did my thumb go? Okay, now by sound of course we can tell you know what the pitch is supposed to sound like so to use the sound a portion we might Right slide Very very slowly, okay, I always uh, advise my students to shift very 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 slowly because it really helps us to understand what the the pitch changes are as we move up the fingerboard or down the fingerboard. But the main one I'd like to talk about is um, the kinesthetic side, you know, the feeling, the, the touch, right? So what is my hand doing when I'm up here? Well, oh, I forgot about the visual part. You can see there's a crease in my hand, so I, I kind of measure about how high that crease is from the, you know, from the uh, top of my violin there as well right when I play that okay but the the kinesthetic side um, as well is like you know how far let's say did my hand stretch like that right how tall is my finger right how far did my thumb slide it went from this spot right to this spot um, how where does my one go how far did it travel so really paying attention to all those cues, distances, shape of the finger, um, you know, how high did my hand go, all of those things. If you use those, there, there's probably about 10 cues right there. If you even really understand or really observe even three of them, four of them, five of them, you're going to hit that shift perfectly in no time, okay? So this really, really, really works. I'm telling myself, just pay attention more to what I'm doing, especially how my hand's moving, how high things are, where my thumb is, where my arm is. That's the other thing you can measure here from here. See the, the bend in my elbow, and then is the bend in my elbow different? Did you see my elbow came around, right? So noticing every single little thing like that and trying to recreate that each time, you're bound to get it. Usually when I pay attention like that, I can figure it out in about three tries. Definitely by five tries. I can, I can start seeing consistency right away, and I hope you do too.